Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Big Idea 5. Or 5, as I say in that country time. Uh, we did a bit of it in class, so let's kind of just recap a little bit and make sure that we are ready to roll. So, NA plus 1. So, on this part, what we're supposed to do, all we're doing... Oh, it's going to do that to me. All we're doing... Oh, where'd it go? Yikes, this makes it seem like we're going to do way more than we're going to um, on this podcast. All we're going to do is emphasize that coefficients um, give you the ratios of rate changes. Okay, So notice when we have these tables, they're often done in molarities. Okay, So question can be leveled up, meaning made harder, by giving moles in two liters of solution or changing gases. Okay, catalysts act differently, and maybe a surface catalyst, so its concentration is constant. Um, catalysts, remember, are reactants that reform, so they're going to have the same concentration typically all the way through. Um, graph the above many lines, or interpret the graphs many lines should be expected. Okay, so um, rates of reaction are determined by experiment only. Okay, so this is important. You can't look at it. Now, once you know one, so if I know, if I have 2A plus B yields 3C, once I know the rate of 2A, I can then figure out B and C. But you can't go, oh, A, that, that you know, that A, that is some fast, quick little dude. He's just going to be the fastest one. You can't tell by looking at it. You have to do it by experiment. Relative rates can be found by comparing the coefficients, which is what I just said. Some reactions that can happen do not happen because they do not have activation energy, okay? This is a very common gotcha question. The reaction should happen but doesn't. Why? You don't have enough activation energy. Um, typically, this can be affected by temperature increase. Let's start it. Typically, not always. Okay, so now we're into collision theory. This is the big dog of big idea five, collision theory. Okay, this is collision theory. For a reaction to take place, particles have to collide with enough energy in their correct orientation. Orientation is a much better word than angle. Please use orientation. Okay, so you need to know that. That needs to be part of your soul. Okay, changing rate of a reaction is due to the collision theory. Okay, so in other words, what, I, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to have, oh, I'll draw this little weird thing. Mm, welcome back to biology with your lock and key. So these things have to collide perfectly to react. Okay. Um, if you have this, notice this looks like, oh, that shouldn't be that hard to do. But what if my little nose guy over here is facing the wrong way and this guy is facing the right? Oh, this is sadness, right? So, and what happens if they're arranged the right way? Here's my little nose guy. Oh, well. and then, oh, but this guy's going this way. Oh, no, right? So things have to collide, kaboom, with enough energy. What if they just barely touch? Oh, the reaction won't happen. And the correct orientation, this one is good. Um, this one, even if they're going the right way, their orientation is incorrect. And this one just never collides. Okay. So if I heat a reaction, the particles are moving faster, so there'll be more collisions. And there'll be more energetic collisions. So um, just more collisions helps. Okay, if I have a one in 10,000 chance, or let's say we'll, we'll pick on Carlos here. If Carlos has a one in 10,000 chance of falling in love on his great um, exchange thing, one in 10,000. Well, what he's going to do is he's Carlos is going to go try and find a million people. Yeah. Yeah, Carlos. What's that mean? That means he's going to be able to have more people love Carlos. Aww. If you heat a reaction, the particles move faster, so they have more energetic collisions. Boom, 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 boom. So that means this has to have enough energy to collide. Okay. If you increase the concentration, there's more collisions. Not a better rate. Not a better ratio. Just more. So if one out of 20 people likes Luke. Um, should Luke go to a school that has 200 people or should Luke go to a school that has 20,000 people? Well, if Luke wants to have friends, Luke should go to a school of 20,000 people because he has a better chance of friends if only one out of 20 people like Luke. Okay. 
catalyst. A catalyst makes it so that less energy is required. So it doesn't typically give you more collisions, but it gives you more collisions with enough energy. Okay. You can also powder a solid. If you do that, you have more surface area. That means there's more places for collisions and there's an extreme change in rate. Okay. And then I wanted to throw a couple of vocab words at you here. Kinetics. The rate at which reactants are converted into products. Stoichiometry. Converting one substance to another using a balanced equation. Surface area. Part of a substance that is supposed to react. The cube has six sides. Cut that cube in half and you have eight sides. You increase the collision area by 33%. 33% faster is amazing. Imagine I picked on Luke before. Luke, imagine if your fastball was 33% faster, right? So if you're throwing at 80 miles per hour, 33% of 80 miles per hour is at least 85 miles per hour. I know it's more than that, but you get the idea. Here's the cube. So before, you could react here, you could react here, you could react here, you could react here, you could react on the bottom, right? But if I cut it in the middle, that's when I get even, oh, I need a darker color for this. Oh, yeah, we'll get black. That's where I'll get even more surface area, right? All right. 5-2, rate loss. Rate law is rate equals always going to be K. Let me get rid of my black highlighter. Always going to be K. Always going to be rate equals K. And then you're going to have some reactants, okay? X to the A, Y to the B, Z to the C. It's very often shown as A to the A, B to the B. I don't like this because it implies that they are not coefficient. Okay? K is the rate constant. That's right there. It's units change. Rate is molarity over time. Different units for time, minutes, seconds, hours are possible. X, Y, and Z are the reactants and sometimes catalysts in molarity. Okay, I want to emphasize Brackets means you're in molarity. So it's only in aqueous or gases are going to be listed here. X, Y, and Z are often listed as A, B, or C, as I showed you there. Little a, little b, and little c are exponents describing the effect of the concentration on that reactant on the rate. The options for A, B, and C are zero, first, and second order. There are a few other orders, but not in AP chemistry. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Comes to your textbook. Hey, we've got one of those. The elementary steps, so the simple step. A turns into products. That is unimolecular. There's only one of them, right? Um, bimolecular would be squared. Notice how I have two things. Bimolecular, also shown as 2A. Another way to have bimolecular would be A and B. They're different, but that would be 1 plus 1 would be 2. And you can see that termolecular, you don't need to. These words are not key to understanding. I don't think I've seen them on a test, so don't sweat what's bimolecular, termolecular. But it, it should make sense. Um, molecularity, which means how many things collide, is essentially how many particles have to collide with enough energy in the correct orientation. Second order has two particles collide with enough energy in the correct orientation. Second and third order are much harder. They're slower and less frequent to occur. Okay. So um, what you'll see, different ways to represent the rate. So the rate law is this change in A over change in time, or the rate law would be that right here. All right. Rate law. So here's zero order. So, whoops. Here's zero order. So rate equals Ka to the zero, which is weird. Um, the integrated rate law, and this is on your equation sheet, a equals negative kt plus a naught. Notice how that looks like y equals mx plus b. Okay. So the plot for the linear graph is a versus t. Notice how that's y versus x. Okay. Um, the same thing goes for each one. You do need to familiarize yourself with the equation sheet so you know the order that it goes in. So they have, um, they only list first order and second order. And first order is on top and second order is on the bottom, so you don't even really have to memorize it. But on this stuff, when you see this rate law, if you can see this as y equals mx plus b, you know that you would graph ln a versus t to get it linear. 
you would graph 1 over a versus t for linear here. On the slope for the linear plot is negative k. Notice it's got a negative sign. It's got a negative sign. Um, and then negative k. And then this is the only one that's positive k. Um, half-life, the only half-life one they guarantee us dealing with is this right here. Um, so the half-life of this is also ln2 over k. And you can do the math to derive that equation, but you don't have to. The order with respect to a is the exponent on a alone. So let me erase what I had here a little bit. So these exponents that I'm looking at, give me a little blue. That's the order with respect to a for that one. That's the order with respect to a for that one. That's the order with respect to a for that one. Okay. Um, the order for the entire reaction is the sum, add up the exponents of each part. Okay. Um, this, I think, is quite superfluous, meaning you can derive this, and I wouldn't want to have to memorize it, but people do. Some people like to memorize stuff. They, they feel better about it if they know where it is. So if, it's, if the overall reaction for the order is zero, it's molarity over time. If it's one, it's one over time, and you can see some different ones. Do you see how this has an order of three because it's one, one plus one plus one? And this is three because it's one plus two. So it's good to see a handful of these set up a little differently. Okay. All right. We're going to do some of these by experiment, and then I'm going to let you go. Determine the uh, order by experiment tables. So what you have to do to find the concentration of NH4, this is going to explain it to you in bits by bits by bits by bits by bits. Okay. So I'm just going to show you what I do. Notice from here to here, it's doubled. Okay. From here to here, that's doubled. All right. Now, notice here, these have to be the same. So I am going to use experiment one and experiment two because the only thing changing is NH2. So when I figure this out, it's going to be rate equals, oops, I put rate K, rate equals K times NH2 negative to the sum power. Now, this says 2 to some power X equals 2. Well, hey, guess what? That's 1. Okay? That's the order with respect to NH2 negative. Okay? Now, if I want to find the order with respect to NH4, I'm going to change my color here. I look for this to be the same. And I notice as I go from here to here, it doubles. And as I go from here to here, it doubles. Okay? So that means in the same experiment, 2 to the x equals 2, that's still true. So it's going to be NH4 positive to the first. All right. So that's just a long way of doing it. Um, that just step by steps you through it. Find the overall order. 1 plus 1 is 2. So it's second order. Write the rate law. Hey, that's what I did. Right? Find K at this temperature. Ooh. So I need to find K. So at this temperature. So notice the temperature. Um, temperature will change the value of K. Let me erase a little bit. Give myself a little place to work. So I know this is the rate law. Bum, bum, bum. So I'm going to plug in what I can. 1.35 E negative 7 equals K. I'm going to rewrite that. I'm going to have in the worst writing problems. 1.35 E negative 7 equals K, which is what I'm solving for. NH2 negative is 0.005. It's not an S. And times 0.1. So I took everything from this experiment. And I Hello. say, calculators assemble. And I dig out my calculator. Hello, calculator friend. I hope this isn't my one that's dead batteries. That's my dead battery friend. Oh, no, I have another one. I hope this is my one with a low battery. No, it's not. It's my fully charged one. How about that? So I take 1.35 E negative 7 divided by 0 0.005, divided by 0 0.1, whoops, I hit the wrong button, and I get 2.74, 2.7 E negative 4, and that's K. Now, remember how this is molarity over seconds? This is molarity, this is molarity. Do you see how the molarities will cancel? Okay, so that means I need to move this molarity to the other side. So if I'm looking at just units, 1 over seconds equals Molarity, this is K, right? So to get rid of this, i got to divide by M. So this is going to be 1 over molarity seconds, okay? 
AP Chemistry loves to write that unit as molarity negative one seconds to the negative one. But you can write it however you like. Um, so there you go. Let's do another. Yeah, I love these. Find rate law and solve for K with units. Dun, 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 dun. These two are the same. These two are the same. This guy doubles. When this guy doubles, this guy, oh my goodness, I don't know what. So I'm going to put it in my calculator. 1.6 E negative 3 divided by 8 exponent negative 4. Charlie already did that in his head and saw that that's times 2 as well. So this means rate equals K times bro 3. Yeah, bro. Bro. Whoops to the first, because it does the same thing, right? And then I gotta do another one. Let's see if I can get BR negative. Okay, so when I go from here to here, and here to here, they're the same, right? So this guy right here doubles, and this guy right here, I can do that in my head, doubles. So that means it's brr to the first as well. Now let's look at H positive. These are the same. These guys double. This guy, uh-oh. Let's see. 3.2 E negative 3 divided by 8 E negative 4 is A times 4. So in this case, 2 to the X, this doubling, uh, 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 this doubling to some power X equals 4. So what power is x? 2. So it's going to be h positive squared. All right? All right. So when we have that, then we're going to file solve for k. And we're going to just use the top one again. Let's get our math going. I'm going to substitute into this equation right here. Okay? So my rate is 8e negative 4 equals k, and then bro 3 to the 1.1, 1. 1, br negative 0. 0.1, h positive 0. 0.1 squared. k equals, do some math, 8e negative 4 divided by what the weirdness happened there? Um, 8e negative 4 divided by... 0.1 divided by 0.1 divided by 0.1 squared. And that is 8. And again, I have molarity per second equals molarity to the fourth. So that goes away, and I have um, my units would be 1 over molarity to the third seconds. All right, last one. Find the rate law and solve for K. Ah, you know what? We did enough here. This has gone on for long enough. So we'll do that one in class, and we will say to all of you, toodles.